What's going on family? It's your brother Lawrence here with another episode of Watch God Work. In every episode, we get the distinct pleasure and privilege to speak to a brother and sister that's doing exceptional work in every field of human endeavor. And today it is no different. I have my brother, our brother, Christian Haynes. What's going on, King? Not much, man. I'm glad to be on the show. It's a true blessing, man, especially to talk about what we're going to talk about. So <laughs> thank you. Yo, man, I, I thank you, man. We were chopping it up offline and I just said, man, I'm so thankful for him. You know, I think in the past, you know, couple of years, I think people, whether in the advent of TikTok and social media, I think uh, many people, I, I would say, are are spoiled <laughs> by the, the free, beautiful content that comes out. But I think the content that makes us laugh, the content that makes us think, the content just that we we fill our days with, it, it's, it's actually stewarded by people who God has, 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 has given the creative gift and Christian is, is one of those people. I, I, I think you call yourself like social media content creator. I call him a comedian. I call him an actor. Um, in all these ways, man, his reach is in the millions from TikTok and the all. I think people have come to know him different ways. I've come to know some of the hilarious things. I think, what was what was my man? Uh, the, mm, da, mm, da, mm, na, 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 like, you know, like that. <laughs> you know, when I laugh so hard of that, of that meme, I, I just say this to say, man, I thank you, but Clearly, I can't give a perfect introduction. I can't tell you still perfectly, even though we've studied your story. So let's kick it off with Christian. Who is Christian Haynes, good brother? Uh, man, Christian Haynes is a God-driven, uh, faithful, and just a hard worker, man, and just want to make people happy at the end of the day, man. That's really my goal. I've always been like that since I was younger. Um, really, all my life, I played uh, football. And like, that was my main pursuit. But it's like, I've always had a personality. You can go talk to my coaches and uh, all my top, uh, teammates, especially in college. Like I was just the funny dude in the locker room. But uh, I just always like making people smile and laugh, man. It just, it brought joy to me. Mm. And uh, I've always been a person that uh, just uh, always been happy for when my brothers succeed or when they're happy and stuff. So I've always been a person that, just enjoy making other people happy. And that's really the overall like person of me. Like I just make like making people laugh and enjoy their days. Cause there's, um, especially like you were saying, like in this pandemic, like people are like really getting depressed and sad. And um, like, I'm just glad God blessed me with the tools I had so I can make people laugh. Cause you don't, you, people may look down on some social media and be like, oh, making videos isn't that big of a deal, but you don't know who day you could change. You really don't. You can change someone's day and you can inspire someone. Like there's different content creators that inspire me. Mm. So it's like, you don't know who day you can change. And when um, God works through you like that, it's like, you don't know what could happen. So mm. yeah, man, I, I just like um, making people, pe people happy, man. That's at the most part. So Br brother, man, I, I think I, I don't have to speak on behalf. I think you're doing a great job of it. Um, and, and I think people are noticing, especially, you know, obviously this is, this is a greenfield conversation, but I think people are noticing and recognize the importance of, of content creators. And, you know, I always say that God is the greatest creative of all time. And so you mm -hmm. are kind of in the pattern and in an image of one who, you know, spoke the world into existence was the, the idea of made real. I have to think, man, I, I just, I can imagine myself in like the Genesis story, man, because you, you know, you're born in Japan you know, kind of military family moving around. And obviously you have a number of different siblings. You know, what was this, the dynamic coming up? Because clearly you knew that you kind of like making people laugh and like making people smile, but you have all these siblings, you're moving around. Was it a, was it a kind of a story where you kind of like had to get creative because you were kind of, because you were in these environments that always changed, you were, you had a lot of time to yourself and you kind of developed a lot of things. You watched a lot of content. Like just take me through kind of the, your, your childhood and your time, how this creativity was cultivated? Uh, so really, as I was younger, because I watch um, uh, some old home videos, I've always been silly. I've kind of always <laughs> been that kind of weird, funny kid and uh, kind of different. Like, I'm not saying like, I, I kind of wasn't saying like I didn't fit in, but I, I was just always to myself. And one thing I've always did was stay true to myself. I ain't never changed for nobody. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I look different. 
I always straight stay true to myself because eventually people would gravitate to me and whoever that would be, we would be cool. Mm. So, but um, when it comes to just being funny, I'm gonna be real. My dad is hilarious, and I, I really do feel like I got a lot of my comedic ways from him. He's just mm. silly to this day, and um, I think that rubbed off on me. But it didn't really hit me till high school when uh, Snapchat just came around. Mm. And uh, I would actually make skits on Snapchat to uh, for the people at my high school and in the county. And I would just do that. And people would be like, wow, man, like, you're really funny. Like, you should do a YouTube and stuff. And, like, you should go on Vine. I'm just like, nah. I'm like, I'm, I'm locked on to football. You know, I'm trying to get that scholarship. <laughs> so it was stuff I did on the side with my little brother. But I didn't think too deep into it. And I think I did other little skits in college like on snapchat but uh, i was really locked on on football but um i think closer to my senior year um i used to have people just hit me up on instagram be like yo like you're really entertaining like you should probably start something like a youtube or something like a comedy page mm -hmm. and i think i i have an ex uh older sister she still talks to me to this day i remember she told me she was like like, you could really be something. Like, mm. you are really funny. And that was, like, in 2018. And I still talk to her to this day. I was like, it's just crazy how some people in the past, like, really saw something in me. So I was like, it must be a sign. Like, God must be giving me a sign. Like, maybe I should be doing something. <laughs> and um, I think I started a YouTube page uh, my spring season of uh, my senior year in college. Mm. And uh, it, it was doing all right. But um, things didn't start to blow up till we hit. Uh, the pandemic mm. so I did the YouTube was full, cool everybody on my team thought it was funny but it wasn't doing too much and then that pandemic hit and I came back here and I was just bored I, I didn't know what to do so I think my first skit that went viral was when I went to take the garbage out and like when you take it out at night and someone chased you back it feel like someone chasing you back in <laughs> yeah we uh I ended up doing that and that blew up and I was like yo so one of my teammates hit me up because it was hit, everyone was posted Snoop Dogg Daquan like everyone I was like yo what is going on and then my teammate hit me up Ben DeLuca he was like hey man um I think you should like keep going with this like you hot right now so you should probably keep going with it so I was like shoot I ain't got nothing else to do so I consistently, like when I say consistently, it was day after day. Cause I'm a person of consistency. Mm. That's how I got to Charlotte. That's how I um, walked, I walked on to Charlotte and then I ended up getting a scholarship my senior year. And mm. majority of it, all of my success is one because of God, only because of God, mm. but faith without, faith without works is dead. Mm. So I'm mm. a, I'm a big person on work. And w when I say work, I mean, consistent work and, I've learned that in football, like when I put in consistent work, I started to separate myself from others. Mm. So I basically took this football mindset and just brought it into something else that I know I'm blessed and talented. Now, football, I was blessed, but I had to work for everything. But mm. this, I know I, I got I got it in this. So it felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I knew I knew I had it in this uh, in, when it comes to comedy and entertaining people. Mm. So now I just got to put it. I got to do my part. God already blessed me with it. I just got to do my part. Right. And I want this whole year, like when I say in a year, like I just started it doing skits April of last year and I just was consistent. And then I started and I don't really like to compare myself to other content creators. I mm -hmm. like to stay in my lane. But I, I mean, to be truthful with you, I'm noticing like, dang, I'm passing up some of my favorite content creators mm -hmm. and they've been on doing what they've been doing for years. And then like like I, I try to tell my friends because I, I do have friends that aren't believers. And mm. um, I mean, I still speak my truth to them mm. in a respectfully way. I respect them. But I tell them, like, bro, everything I've earned, like I can only do so much. Like mm. I my videos, the videos I do, I post them. But that's it. I don't push it. I don't tell my friends to post them. None of that. That's why I say God comes in and does that for me. But mm. it, it's that. I tried to explain it, but that, that I can only do so much. I can only do so much. Bro, that's so, a word. Bro, this is, yeah. you know, there's a lot of gems, man. You know, to, one, you know this, this, hmm. the consistency piece of it all, the reality of like, I, I can only do but so much, right? That, 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 that has been part of it, man. I, 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 it makes me curious, man, because I think what I what I think is so infectious about you and your content and just, you know, if anybody 
have the privilege to be able to chop it up with you. There's an enthusiasm. It feels like just enthusiasm of life, right? Um, that I think flows out into your work. And so it naturally begs the question of like, just what was that Genesis story with you and God, right? Of when you realize that, yo, okay, God is somebody that I want to rock with, you know, like, or like, this is something I need. Cause a lot of times we grow up and, you know, you kind of, you, you grow up in the house, you kind of get it, but then there's another level that you get to like, talk us through kind of like, what was your Genesis when God was like, yo, no, this is, he's my center. This is what I need. Um, basically, honestly, when I was a uh, high school, so growing up, I've always been in a Christian household, mm -hmm. but, uh, high school was when I got involved with, uh, FCA fellowship of Christian athletes mm -hmm. and God, I'm going to be real. I think God got my attention with football. Football mm -hmm. is why, how I, uh, met God and, um, with fellowship of Christian athletes, I went to the camps and got involved. And I learned so much and like really developed a strong relationship with God through that mm. and uh, the people he would put around me. And um, yeah, man, like I think the start of, yeah, in high school and then going into college, there was fellowship of Christian athletes and just uh, being blessed to go to Charlotte when you got other Christian athletes around you. So all that just helped. So when, when, when he got me involved with that, that's when I really was like, okay, like God is really looking out and just, um, I think the stuff he's done in my life too, mm. as in like, I walked on to Charlotte. I, w I actually went to Elizabeth city state university first. Mm. That was my first school I went to, but I remember like not being so unhappy there. Mm. And, uh, I just went there because I didn't get any scholarship offers from in high school. And I just went there to play ball. And I just remember being so sad and like, dang, like I, like four of my brothers all played, uh, three of my brothers played D1 football. Mm. So it's like, dang, I'm trying to do that too. Mm. But all of them six foot tall, I'm five nine. Mm. So, you know, I got to put in the extra work. So then I didn't get those offers like they did. And then I remember I was at Elizabeth City just praying like, God, like give me a, some type of sign like that I need to leave and go to Charlotte or something like that. And I remember walking out one day and some dude, I forgot his name, but he saw me, he was like, yo i saw your high school highlights you're really good i was like yeah thanks and then he looked at me he said why are you here i was like all right <laughs> that, that, was, that was all i needed to <laughs> i was like <laughs> you're like thank you he said why <laughs> yeah exactly so once he did that um i i took a leap of faith and i trusted god i went to charlotte with the coaches not knowing me at all mm. and then i went there and then um eventually i worked hard for a year i had to take off a year and I worked hard for a year. I met football players. They got me in connection with getting on the football team. I got on the football team as a walk-on. And then all glory to God because he worked that all out, just the people that connected with me. And then I remember um, a new coaching staff comes in. I did really good my senior year, that spring game. I tore my uh, pec mm -hmm. benching. Ooh. Oh, and I'm, hard. yeah, <laughs> I tore my pec benching. And I'm like, I was just just had a great spring season. And I just remember um, I was thinking about, like, I was like, man, I really want to get a scholarship. But after that, I said, ain't no way I'm getting a scholarship. Mm. Ain't no way. I, I stopped praying about it. Mm. Like, it got to the point I was just like, it is what it is. And I was just like, dang, man, I put in a lot of hard work to get on our team. Mm. And then the beginning of our fall, uh, Coach Healy uh, surprises me at the Panthers game with a full scholarship. And I was just like, yo, this is God is the real deal and he, mm. he really bought it like and regardless of like because i've made mistakes and i'm not perfect i'm gonna be real with you i'm not perfect mm. and i know that as a christian but i still continue to try to grow my relationship and do better and better and to get right with god so mm. bro yeah man, I, I love i love the story and i love how you tell it in specific specifically because i think it's almost like teaching right or how people learn or the people who kind of learn where there's just like, okay, I need to see things visually. The people who learn like in practice, like give me a practical world model of how this math makes sense. Like, okay, I paid mm -hmm. this, I did this. And I think similar that I think people forget about that even with God, that for some people it's just like, it's not gonna be that they're having this contemplative moment over a sermon. It's mm -hmm. just that they are living real life to experience something in practice. And as opposed to giving it to the universe or to just uh, coincidence, they're like, yeah. oh, snap. Oh, God, you're real. Oh, oh. You know? Yeah, so exactly. I just think it's, <laughs> it, it, I think that's just helpful to, to hear. And I also don't want to miss this other piece around just, man, like around 
the athletics and how important that is because i always say like the gift it was is like gave me a gift of learning my body but also it was just a channel by which i could see god at work in me and then also cultivate my work ethic and i do think that's important especially when you think about other elements of your life right mm -hmm. because regardless of what you're going to do to your point God's not going to do everything. Like I have to do the work. I have to be consistent. And so in the same way that this, uh, this, they gave me an opportunity for me to do something I wanted to do to play football and see God at work. Another gift that's helping you today is just that work ethic and consistency that is helping you be able to put out the amount of content. Uh, because I'll say this much, bro, I don't know all it is that y'all goes into the thing. Uh, you know, like I, I believe in, you know, I love film. I've been in the business. Yeah, that, it takes a lot of work to edit them videos and to shoot and to cut and to do that, bro. <laughs> so I know you be on it, man. Like, so, so what is, what is your rhythm? Like, just tell me like your day-to-day -day rhythm. Is it like, how does the idea generation, like you get the idea inspired, inspired somewhere, God gives it to you. And then like, walk me through your daily process, bro. You don't have to give away your trade yes. secrets though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, it's crazy. Cause really, he really, I'll be telling my boy Jeffrey, because he's in a lot. My Jeffrey and my little brother are in most of all my videos. <laughs> and I'll be telling Jeffrey, he'll you ask him, you'd be like, um, if you ask Jeffrey, be like, how did Christian be getting his ideas? He'd be like, he'd be in the shower. I say, I tell him, I'm like, every time I get out of the shower, I'd be like, yo, Jeff, I got this funny idea. <laughs> He'd be like, how you be coming up? I'm like, I don't even know. God, man, he'd be blessing me. But um uh, yeah, uh, a lot of the times I'll get the idea and um, I'll write it down. I have like a notes page full of stuff mm. I still haven't even touched. And uh, basically like nine times out of 10, Jeffrey will be in it and I'll tell him. And it's really, it's crazy because music will inspire me. Mm. I'll hear a mu like any type of beat and I'll be like, and then a scene just starts to make up in my head. I'm like, okay, this, this will fit. Because I like doing a lot of uh, movie type Yep. skits yep. and recreating different scenarios so when i hear that song or anything i'll be like okay this will fit and then it will just start going in my head and i'll call my boy real quick and be like yo how you this sound he's like that's good so we'll set up a day he'll come and then um i want to say depending on some of the skits man and we do it all on our phone like everything i do is on my phone editing and everything mm. so there's no excuse for anyone i think they need <laughs> high tech stuff you do not. You just need your cell phone. But it'll take us about maybe, depending on the skit, an hour to two hours. And then we'll get it done. And then um, I'll go in my room, start to edit, and uh, get it out as soon as possible. So the, I know in the in the um, beginning stage, I just had more time and consistency to do it. Now it's like I've gotten into an acting agency. Mm. So I'm not – I try to do like maybe three or two times a week if if i can but it's like now i'm going into the stage where i really want to be so uh either way is a blessing but uh yeah that's really mostly how the day goes man it's nothing mm. too crazy but it, it it like i said it takes time i still got to edit on my phone it's about i think editing takes about 45 minutes depending on what the video is youtube i just got on youtube and that takes a little bit more than <laughs> of the little minute skits because it's like yeah. now you got to make some of these skits eight minutes long so yeah yep. brother man like you know and one that's you know as you as you continue as you continue to grow and as you continue you know you're gonna you, you're gonna get help to help out with that thing but <laughs> I, bro I, I can imagine man, i think people overlook just how much faith it requires for you to actually be doing this but be subject to creative moments so for example it's like beautiful mind or, you know, just people, musicians, when people talk about their process and like sometimes there are musicians who literally like leave the country because they don't have inspiration. They just zone out. You know what I'm saying? And so it seems like even from your standpoint, the fact is like literally you're subject to the inspiration when it comes. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that you're building, you know, like you're building a career, but then everything that you've built that, you know, that you're able to put out it's not like there's a, a a formula of like I if I do these two things it just comes. It's like literally God just gives it to me. Do you ever just think about that? It's almost like a walking on water, and then once you realize you're walking on water, you start to drown. Like, do you ever get overwhelmed yeah. by how subject you are to this divine inspiration of these ideas? Like, oh my gosh, like I can't do anything unless He gives it to me. You know what I mean? Like, do you feel overwhelmed by that? Um. Oh man, that's a good question. 
because I never really thought that deep into it, honestly. Oh, let me not mess you up, man. Give me. I never even thought that deep into it. I just be, hey, to be real with you, bro, I just be chilling and it be coming to mind. I'd be like, dang. But uh, no, man, to be honest, I don't. I just kind of go with the flow. Mm. And um, it's crazy because I never, bro, God be the glory. I, I never hit like a writer's block. Mm. like I never like I really just be and say if I do I mean I got ideas in my notes but it's like I'm always it's like my mind is always on the go and I'm always thinking of like okay how can I be creative how can I be funny but um not saying I won't run into a writer's block because it happens to every creative but um I'm just blessed that I've been really consistent with what I've been doing and um but yeah, to be honest, no, I really don't really get overwhelmed by it, man. It just mm. comes, and when it comes, I'm just like, all right, well, I move now. <laughs> I mm. move and do it. So, mm. this is man. I, I think I think that's a testament of faith, right? You know, and you know, like I said, I was like, I ain't trying to mess up your flow, man. Don't even think about <laughs> it, man. Don't. You, but but also, man, your relationship to content, right? Again, you know, I, I talk about who God is. But I also think about just, you know, God as, 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 as Jesus and his storytelling and, you know, the, those parables, those things he, he always communicated through stories. And, you know, studies show that stories is the most effective way to communicate concepts. And so I'm interested about like what your draw is even to, to just not only movies, but also just TV shows, because you and I laughed offline. I was just like, I love so many of his, his things is inspired by shows. And I and like, even though you don't even like brand it with the show, I could already feel the show. I could feel like this, this nostalgic connection, you know, for you, was, was that divine? Like for you, what did you find in content that just drew you? Is it just that like, man, I'm a creative. I just love the, just talk me through kind of your creative connection to content. Oh, uh, so when it comes to that, man, well, I was born in, I was born in 97. So basically, I guess I started to grasp stuff uh, it's early 2000s. So, you know, mm -hmm. I grew up on the Jamie Foxx show, Wayne's mm -hmm. Bros, Martin, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and I, I I watched those shows when I was younger, a Keenan and Kel, and like I'm like looking at this like, yo, this is funny. So literally, like all those shows I named, like for uh, Jim Carrey, Adam mm -hmm. Sandler, like I grew up on that early funny stuff, kind of raw, mm -hmm. <laughs> physical comedy too. Yep. Oh, my mind. So like a lot of that early '90s, 2000s comedy is stuck with me, and like that feeling. That uh, one thing I've learned after I did the garbage can one is like, okay, I need to do relatable stuff. People mm. love relatable stuff mixed with comedy. Mm. So when I started to move into the sitcom movie stuff, I was like, okay, you know, one thing everyone loves is the sense of nostalgia. Mm. They love that feeling. So I was like, let me go ahead and take advantage. And I think I can't even, I think the first one I did was the sitcom one. And then I was like, okay, this went viral. I was like, let me do another one. Just, I just started going off of that. And um, I think those are my most favorite skits to do because one, it gives people nostalgia, but I also like kind of surprise myself after I edit and watch it, be like, dang, this is really on point. Like, this is really how it be. <laughs> that so, was uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. But yeah, uh, <laughs> what's it called? Yeah, I just be watching and be like, yeah, this is like crazy how it just comes out. So. Um, yeah, a lot of that content uh, before me, especially in the early 2000s, really inspired me, especially with the uh, actors and uh, Jamie Foxx and the Wayne's Bros, especially the Wayne's Bros. Those, mm. They were really my favorite, and they inspired the mess out of me to really make a lot of the stuff I do now. Mm. Man, it, it stays with you, man. I think, you know, it's like back in the day when they, they, they talk about you here in the barbershop, people are like, you know, back in our day, our music was a little better. You know, I think I think all of us have that dynamic when it comes to content. Like, oh, our shows, but our cartoons was better. But there was, I have to say, there was some sort of like a golden moment, man. And like, you know, the decade, even from the 90s all the way through. But like that 2000s, man, there's, there's a lot um, of, of just, I think, amazing i think physical comedians too like i said jim carrey who moves and there's there's a mm -hmm. lot of it in that i you, i think I, I am like now just like imagining myself in your world as best as i can a part of your world is exist in your mind and you know i just think about rhythm right like you know like i can imagine like it's like you said your brain's always going so how do you kind of experience like 
peace or knowing when to shut off or, you know, like, how do you kind of find peace in the midst of so much activity happening, positive activity in your brain, responsibilities, like, just what does that look like with you and God, right? Like, how do you find peace with God in the midst of just this, your creative engine being on a hundred? Um, that's a good question, because I'm still, to be real with you, I'm still trying to find out, too. Mm. Um, I think, you know, what's crazy, man, is that I was talking to my girlfriend. She's a real big believer. Uh, I met her through a fellowship of Christian athletes. Mm. And uh, uh, we've been together two years and uh, I was talking to her. We talk about God a lot. Mm. And I was like, oh, we, I forgot what we were talking about. But like God literally convicted me on the phone. And it was just like, I shut everything out without being you know, always creative and mm. like leave peace and time for myself and God. Mm. And uh, like to be, I'm just being real with you. Like I'm still on that process of really figuring out because it's like one thing I do I, I think of God every day every mm. single day he's on my mind at all times and uh if you like ever like you could tell my friends man when we talk about God I am very passionate when it comes to that <laughs> I am very passionate and uh it's funny like man I am so it don't matter who it is like I'm very passionate about speaking about him but it's like I also know myself and I I just feel like I really need to be like really sitting down and like giving that um that intentional mm. intentional uh like giving him intentional attention mm. and like really sitting down and like getting in that peace mode to shut mm. everything out and I, i'm i'm still working on it man it's like i do it but i want to do it more consistently mm. you know what i'm saying mm. so it's like i i'm not doing skits all the time and stuff and i do take breaks but it's like when i do those breaks it's like what am I doing? Am I, am I scrolling on TikTok? Like, mm. not really, nothing really going towards my life with that. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I just need to reevaluate where my time is going because I, I I wouldn't be in this position without him. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So yeah, I was just keeping it a hundred with you, man. I'm still no, working on it. You know what I'm saying? No, that's not man. Man, it's, it's, it's humility, man, and I I think that actually is gonna bless people around. Just the reality of it's a journey right? No, none of us have it down, right? And especially in those new levels that you experience, whether it's in your career, your family life, there's going to be new expectations about what it means for you to connect with God at more of your time. Like, shoot, or if you have a baby, you're like, all right, shoot, my time has changed. Oh, how does it mean to connect? Oh, wow, shoot, now I got this acting gig and now I got to go six months and I'm, I'm in another country, you know, like, mm -hmm. how do I connect with God here versus when I didn't have to do that? So I, I, I do think that it is, it is something to have grace for yourself about, but I, I think people could, could imagine there's another side of it though because to your to your point what you're putting out man it's not just the the actual physical time of what it requires it's the energy it's like it's spiritual mm -hmm. energy right so like think because i, I think what we we're, we're hearing is like there's so much intentionality saying i want this to relate right but you're not overdoing it but you find it funny mm -hmm. but you're also thinking about the people and anything involving people and your gift, it just it drain it can drain you. So you need mm -hmm. to have some sort of plug in point where you're kind of right. you know, recharging your battery. Yeah, you know, what would be if if you were drawing up this play? You know, what I'm saying out out the slot position. You know, what I'm saying like if mm -hmm. you're drawing it up, how would what would be an ideal day with you and God where you felt like all right, you got a day to yourself and you get to draw up the whole play and where you feel most connected to God? Like, what would the day look like? What would you do? Are you like, oh, I like to be outside or I like to, like, what does that look like for you? Honestly, yeah, I was about to say that. I like to go outside, <laughs> one. especially when it's nice, but I like to go outside and I'm big on uh, reading devotionals. I'm really mm -hmm. big on that. I go on the Bible app a lot and uh, I do a lot of devotionals and, um, I also have uh, these books that I still have to finish reading. And, I, and I'm going to be real with you, man. I, I, I'm i not a big reader. I need oh, to good. become a big reader. <laughs> I'm not a big reader, but uh, I got these two Christian books. I forgot what they're called. but And I also have my Bible. It's a man's Bible. Mm -hmm. And it, it really helps a lot. So sometimes I think what I think what kind of stops me from also like getting in the Bible as much is like, dang, where do I start? Like, where do I go? Mm -hmm. But uh, when I'm with, when it comes to my plan, I honestly would read devotionals and go outside and probably just go to a random chapter in the Bible and just go from there and like really talk to God. Uh, my girl, she she was just with me. She introduced to me to uh, prayer walking. So I think I'm about to start 
doing that because we went on a walk and we did that out loud. I was like, yeah, that was pretty good. So she, <laughs> she's she's been she's been putting me on the stuff too. So um, you know, I think I would add that. But um, yeah, man, I just want to really. I think what I want to do is like really get deeper in the Bible mm-hmm. and like really have a when I go into it. I don't want to just read it. Like I got to really study and know what I'm reading, you know, because mm. I think I have a habit of reading it and be like, okay, yeah, I read my Bible checklist. This can't, that yeah, can't yeah, be yeah. no checklist. Duty, you know duty, what I'm saying? Like we did the duty. Yeah. 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 I'm not like, we, it's not like God's giving us points. Like, oh yeah, he read his Bible. Good job. No, like mm. I really need to know when understand what I'm doing. So mm. yeah. So when it comes to the plan, like I said, devotionals and really just read my Bibles and my uh, two Christian books that I got. Mm. the man i like this is refreshing you know the conversation with you is refreshing man because i i think when if people are honest i think we're like we are we're, we're not nav- there's levels every year is new levels of how we're looking to go deeper and you know i, I and, and and i think it goes hand in hand because at the end of the day you know I, i've said this offline and i've said it to you man you know uh, you know we really been saying you got an amazing career man you know i think that you're you bringing joy and 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 help making people smile and, and making people it, it, it is it is it is a need in the body is a need in the world and that's one of the ways in which you know god is uh god is kind of like shown in the world uh, but it's just like but it's sustainable because i think the reality is there are many brothers and sisters who have you know shout out to uh kiami daviel she's a you know child star you know in matilda we we had a conversation a lot of times especially when you're younger and you kind of get put on and you you're now like putting out this content sometimes like the ability to sustain that is is challenging right because of just what you get reintroduced to and so your foundation is so dope that you haven't got i man i am i gotta ask this question bro i think when you when you look out at just hmm, the content that's out there right you know i think to your point you don't really kind of look left to right you like to be inspired by the content creators do you feel that there is still a gaping hole there's still content that, you know, like, you know, whether it's in your notes where you're like, man, this is still missing. This is missing. Social media needs this. I wish we could do that. Is there anything like that that crosses your mind or it's still like, you know what, actually what I'm doing is filling a gap and I'm good with that. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I, I think, think um, kind of on, I'm kind of like in the middle mm. because uh, there is a lot of stuff that I feel like I can do, but it's like, I don't have like idea with it, but it's then it's like, okay, how can I end it? Like, how can I really make people laugh? And I'll leave it alone. Mm. And then mm. some stuff I'll be like, okay, I can do it. So yeah, I, I would probably just be like, probably in the middle. Cause um, I just, I think what a big thing with me is like, I want to be original. Mm. I want to be original. So um, I don't like some stuff I'll leave on my list. Cause I've seen someone else already do it. And then sometimes, um, like maybe someone did it in that way. So I, I think for me, what my best answer for that is probably just kind of in the middle. And um, mm. usually, but for to be real with you, I probably just post anything that I think is funny. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this is dope. I'm gonna ask you one, one more question as we as we kind of come to the tail to the, the tail end. Um, hmm. Do you feel? Given the nature of your work is putting out content on this platform, you know, do you feel it takes a, me- a measure of faith for you to ever step away just to kind of reset, right? To like not put content, like, you know, taking a day off. Like, how's your relationship to kind of your rhythm on social media? Like, how do you prevent yourself from not being overwhelmed? Because I know a lot of content creators feel overwhelmed, like, yo, man, like just to stay engaged and answer mm-hmm. all the comments and go back and forth. Like, how does your faith play into just your relationship with social media? Uh, when it comes to that, in the beginning, I thought I had to post every day because I need to. I needed like consistency. I needed to uh, another way to keep people engaged. But um, now I'm starting to see like even even though I look at other big content creators, I'm starting to see like dang like sometimes they don't even post every day. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. it's like, I've kind of backed off and like, I'm starting, I'm to the point where I, I have a large enough fan base that they'll stick around if I don't post every day. Like I'm mm. I, like when I went to YouTube, it's like, I was thinking like, oh man, I got to get these videos out. Like people actually expect them. And then I'll go with, to the community and be like, oh guys, I'm not going to be able to post it today. 
And then the, everyone's in the comments like, yo, it's okay. Like, we, we're still <laughs> behind. Like, yo, take your time. I'm just like, whoa. People actually care. So it's like, <laughs> it feels good. And I, I have a lot of faith that um, that I, I've just gotten to the stage, but I have faith that I don't really need to post every day and that I can not take a break. And mm. that when whenever um, I really kind of push more on, uh, on the end of more quality uh, mm. videos, more than quantity, so not saying that mm. when I was posting every day consistently, I thought all of them were quality and it was a bunch, but mm -hmm. I, I'm more focused on, okay, now I really want to lock in and be like, okay, this is going to be really good, but I, I can take a break and everything's going to be all right. So I had to get to that point. It took some time, mm. but I'm literally just getting to that stage. Like, okay, I don't got to post today. It's going to be all right. Like nobody's <laughs> going to be mad at you. So, but I did have that mindset where it's like, dang, people are, rooting on you, Christian, to post today. You need to post today, you know, but I, I live, I'll be okay if I don't, so. Bruh, man, man, like, man, like I, I just said the consistent thing for me is refreshing, man. You you know, you, you, your presence, uh, the, the, you know, the presence and the power of God in you, uh, the content that you put out that we, people get to enjoy right now for free. Right now, <laughs> yeah, right now, <laughs> you know, <all> right? <laughs> right now. Obviously, we're gonna we're gonna be you know when the movie theaters get back, you know we're gonna be putting them, put, putting them tickets in. But you know, I I, I just said it to say, man, it, it is it is refreshing, man, and uh, you know what you do, and you know it's a great service to the world. It's a great service to the world that people get to enjoy the creativity that's channeled through you, man. You know, it, it, what do you have coming up, man? You know, like, you know, this, I, I kind of try to tease it without trying to get put too much out there. But what do you have coming up? If people are trying to support you and find you, what what, 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 do, what do they have to look forward to coming uh, over the next couple months? Man, so, like, I'll, like I said, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to just let you know what it is. But, uh, yeah. yeah, man, next week, um, I'm shooting, actually, me and my boy are shooting our first short film. We're shooting our first short film in our hometown, and uh, it's actually based off a, a skit we did. It was like a, a movie trailers, movies be like, mm -hmm. and it was a money chase thing. So we were like, shoot, we might as well make a short film. So we ain't tell a bunch mm -hmm. of people, but I'm telling you now, we're shooting it next mm -hmm. week. And our goal Absolutely. with that, yeah, appreciate it. Our goal with that is to get into film festivals, and uh, hopefully someone big sees it and maybe turn into a film or show who knows we're gonna give it to god but the, i'm i'm just proud that we actually me and my boy sat down wrote the script got it copyrighted and we're doing it so regardless mm. if it sucks if it's really good i'm just proud that we're doing it and then we're gonna keep going from there because uh i think he's a he's an actor as well and i we talk about it all the time it's like bro like we're getting all these auditions and like but eventually, it's like we can really make our own movies and do a be like we be in charge of the auditions. Like we can make mm. the doors will open for us. Like we build our own door. So it's mm. like we're like we're still doing the acting thing, getting auditions. But eventually, like we want to be the people doing it. So that that's our goal. And um, after that, I mean, uh, there is I will say there is a film that I'm about to be in feature. So that is a that is a blessing as well. I didn't tell not too many people know about it, bro. Yeah, but, I, I ain't gonna blow you up. Yeah. You know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna let you know, man. There's a feature film that's coming out that I will be a part of it, and it's, it's a huge blessing. And I think it's coming out sometime um, next year, next the beginning of next year. So uh, it, it's crazy. It's all because of my skits. It's all because of skits and uh, my my boy that's in it. He's in the movie. So it, it's going to be crazy when uh, people see it and it's like, dang, these dudes did. But all because of the grace of God, because, yeah. man, none of it would have been happening. So, I mean, it's my first stage when it comes to acting. And uh, I know it's just going to go up from here because I love skits. I love doing them. But, yeah, your boy got to level up. And I ain't trying to be doing <laughs> skits all my life. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, <laughs> it's all my life I did skits. <laughs> you know, this not, is brother... Man, I'm 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 like I'm on a hundred right now, man. Just listening, man. I I'm excited about what's to come. I think I can speak on behalf of the brothers and sisters who see this and, and are listening. That man, we're excited. We're excited, man, to see you continue to level up. Not looking, not actually being, you know, not lacking any contentment and being grateful, obviously, for what you're doing now, which is dope. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you know your your gifts are making room for you in different places that you never even imagined. 
And so, brother, man, I just thank you, man, for being faithful. I thank you for being consistent. I thank you for doing the work. I thank you for honoring and being true and authentic to your unique gifts that we are all being blessed by. Right. Yeah, I mean, and so I just pray Godspeed for you and all that you do, man. Brother, where can they find you? I know the Black Badger, man, but you got to say it, man. Where do they find you? How do they connect with you, man? Look, if you want to find me, I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and TikTok, of course, at the Black Badger, T H E E Black Badger. So I'm on all my stuff is up there. Twitter, I kind of just talk about anything. I don't really, I post my stuff up there sometimes, but they don't be showing me too much love. So I, I don't either. Twitter algorithm, man, ain't a little different. A little different. <laughs> hey, that crowd, that's a tough crowd at Twitter. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> hey, some of my stuff go viral. No, it's funny because my stuff usually goes viral on Twitter when other people post it, not when I mm. post it. So it's just mm. like, dang, but I'll be just waiting to see if someone's going to post something of mine and just be chilling. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that that's a tough crowd. But, yeah, you can find me on just about anything. I think I'm going to get on Facebook soon, but everything else is at The Black Badger. My brother, my brother. All respect to you. You got obviously a brother in me. You know that, man. But uh, but thank you again. Thank you for saying your story, man. I know there's many more conversations to have because many more things will come. So, man, blessings to you. Look forward to hollering at you soon, good brother. Appreciate you.